Welcome to Covered. This is CTV and Rebuild Christchurch teaming up together to take a behind the scenes look at the residential rebuild program in Canterbury. Now today we'll be talking with Southern Response about their progress and we'll speak with EQC about some of the more complex land issues and later Cancern's Marcus Irvine looks at foundation repairs. Casey Hurran is the Earthquake Strategy Manager for Southern Response and he joins me now in the studio. Welcome Casey. Thank you for having me, it's good to be here. Thanks for coming along. Now Southern Response has had its fair share of criticism. Can you tell me, out of the 23,000 claims that are currently that are over cap, how many are you, well are Southern Response having to deal with? Uh, we're dealing with just over 7,000 over cap claims, so that's uh, claims for major earthquake damage, whether the house is repairs or rebuilds. And to date we've um, settled 3,500 of those claims completely, and that's meant that um, our customers have been able to buy another house, uh, we've rebuilt for them, they've rebuilt themselves, or they've taken a cash settlement. Um, of, that, of the remaining 3,500, we have approximately 1,800 that are working through the detailed design and documentation process at the moment, so that means the, the real planning for um, repairing or rebuilding their house. And we've got 600 under construction right now, so if you're um, driving around Canterbury you'll see a lot of our sudden response build signs which says that we're, we've got pro we're making good progress and we're underway. Is it going fast enough for you? Is this the rate that you were expecting? Uh, it wasn't the exact rate that we were expecting. Uh, when we first set up our, I guess you could say our forecasts for our, our build program, we'd put some estimates in there and I guess with all the, the complicated uh, land conditions and other things that are occurring in Canterbury, it's meant that it's going, it, it takes about 50% longer than what it had in the past. So um, as it relates... So when you say in the past, do you mean like pre-earthquake? You know, pre-earthquake. Sign kinds of issues, okay. Yeah, so th today you've got to deal with complex land conditions. You have uh, issues like um, building on TC3, so that requires more detailed foundations. You've got um, more involved assessments um, to work out how you're going to repair the house. And all those things cumulatively mean that it's about 50% longer than what would be in a normal business as usual build environment. Okay, I think actually one of the frustrating sides to it for a, a lot of people out there is the amount of toing and froing that's need to be done be between professionals with the, the land, engineers, geotech, all of that kind of stuff as well. Has yes. that been slowing it down? Uh, we, I underst we understand their frustration, but I guess from Southern Response's perspective and also a customer's, customer's perspective, we want to get it right for them. And although uh, it, it is frustrating, from our perspective we think it's absolutely necessary so that people can get back into um, safe and healthy homes. I think actually that could be the bottom line too, is making sure we've got safe and healthy homes. Um, tell me, at the moment you're pitching to be finished by the end of 2016, it, that still seems a long way away, but with those those claims that are left are all complicated, is that going to be achievable? We believe it's achievable. Uh, we believe we're on track to settle about 90% of our claims by the end of 2016. As um, I've mentioned, we've got a, a large um, build program underway, 600 un in construction right now, 1800 that are in the detailed documentation and design phase. Uh, but there are some complications and that's around issues like land, um, building, we, we've got a ground improvement program that we're currently looking to implement where we're going to be uh, improving the ground underneath the foundations and also multi-units. Multi-units are a, a complication that insurers hadn't anticipated uh, but we're working our way through it. I guess the important point to mention um, with multi-units is that the planning process is a lot longer and a lot more involved. You have a lot more consents that you need to obtain, you have a lot more um, agreements that need to be reached That's from neighbour to neighbour and all that adds up to more time. So. Absolutely, it does drag everything out. However, from a client's point of view, when, there's, when the process is becoming quite long, you're going to need a wee bit more support. What is, what's Southern Response doing to sort of help guide these people through this very protracted process? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, from our perspective, we recognise communication is key. So we're doing everything that we can to keep our customers informed. Uh, part of that involves things like uh, we've refreshed our website so it's more tailored for what our customers' needs are. 
We've also uh, developed a, a specific book which um, gives all the information that people need. And we've also allocated claims to specific claim specialists, so a customer has one point of contact so that they um, don't feel like they've been thrown around pillar to post and they can actually speak to the person that knows exactly what's going on with their claim. Is that a change? Is that something that's developed as, as the needs arisen? Absolutely. Um, that was something that we've, we've done earlier this year. So we've been evolving over time and we're always looking for ways that we can try and improve ourselves. And that was one of the, the key areas that we knew that we needed to improve was to develop more tailored communication for our customers so that they felt like that we were um, dealing with their individual claim and their individual circumstances. And not having to repeat the story every time you phone up as absolutely, well. Absolutely, absolutely. So what about for those clients that, that are feeling a little bit frustrated or feeling that they're slipping between the holes, uh, you know, between the gaps, what should they be doing from here do they need to get back in contact with you? Uh, yeah, so so the, the starting point is the claim specialist, but then after that, then we have uh, an opportunity to escalate up within Southern Response. Ideally, we'd like to resolve it ourselves within the organisation, but then there's other external opportunities as well. We have organisations like the Residential Advisory Service, which um, provides free independent advice for people. Give the, it gives our customers an opportunity to have a second look or a second opinion as to what's happening with their claim. Now that's the same group that we've referred to as RAS, is yes, that right? Yes, that's correct, yeah. that's the okay. RAS. We're starting to get some of these acronyms starting to sound a wee bit more familiar now. Yes. Yeah. So the Residential Advisory yep. Service has been um, quite a good point of support for people. Yes, absolutely, and they've got two parts to it now. They have legal advisors as well as technical advisors. So we'd encourage people to uh, not only talk about policy or interpretation issues, but there's an opportunity to talk about things like engineering and quantity survey and other technical challenges that people might just need some more reassurance regarding. Casey, tell me, looking forward over the next you know, sort of 18 months that, that we've got here, that we're talking over, what do you foresee that the biggest challenges for Southern Response? The biggest challenges for us will be around land, uh, the multi-units, so getting that program up and running, helping people understand all the moving parts that are in play there, all the various consultants and customers that are involved, and also uh, the declaratory judgment which has um, recently been heard in the Christchurch High Court, uh, that um, could have an impact on our program as well as we're dealing with complicated issues like increased liquefaction vulnerability and increased flooding vulnerability. Right, that's all, yeah, they're very complicated issues, but we are going to be talking more about that. Thank you very much for your time this morning, Casey, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Now, stay with us because coming up after the break, we are talking about some of these complex land issues with EQC's Head of Canterbury Land.